The day dawned gray in Mega Humeopolis. As Snortius the first awakened to the light of day, he picked his nose, as was his custom. But Snortius felt the slightest bit of unease this morning as he gazed out on his domain. Snortius watched a fresh crop of snotlings claw their way into existence, aimlessly wandering this way and that until grots and older snotlings started whipping them into shape and putting them to work. A pack of squigs that participated in the conquest of Megacumiopolis, led, of course, by Snotius's own beloved attack squig, Pogchomp, frequently broke out of their pens and harassed the poor snotlings, causing their spores to spread far and wide over the fertile fields of the Humi village. After a few days, this first bountiful crop of snots popped right up, nearly twenty of them. The mild unease that Snotius felt evaporated like a morning mist, as he watched the population surge. Now the wheels in Snotius' head began to turn as he thought about the work that needed to be completed. De Furious and his snot crew would likely finish working on the Humi truck before the end of the day. Having something so big and crumpy would be a big boost to the war effort. Snortius grinned at the idea, and his grin grew even wider when he considered that the Greenskins would have another opportunity to nick themselves a Humi truck. The old Humi said that another truck would come within seven days, and despite Stinky mucking up the job of digging a simple hole in the road, the pit was finally completed, and they had everything they needed, and all they had to do was wait. An idea struck Snotius. Oh, of course, he wanted to know the moment the truck arrived so the Humies on board could be killed or captured and their truck could be looted. So he grabbed one of the freshly sprouted snotlings by the leg and carried it over to De Furious's workshop, where he promptly dunked the little snotling in a bucket of red paint. Then and there he dubbed the tiny green skin Snotling McQueen, the reddest, fastest snot in all Snotopia. Snotius set the little fellow down. You see this road over here? Run down it till you see a spot with a big hole. Once the big Yumi truck crashes into the hole, you run back and come get us. You got it? Snotling McQueen shook himself to get rid of some of the drippier bits of paint before nodding. Good! Now get out of here! With that Snotling McQueen ran out of Mega Humiopolis as fast as his little legs could carry him. Snortius nodded his head in approval. He headed over to De Brain's workshop and stuck his head inside. De Brain was bent over one of the catapults that he had used to destroy the watchtowers of Mega Humiopolis. Hey, Brain, what you doing? I am reducing the angle of departure on the weapon, and I have changed the munitions from solid stones and snot fire to a weighted fiber mesh screen suitable for capturing enemy infantry. What? I'm making them shoot nets to catch people. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Stinky, what are you doing? I am sitting on my hands and not touching anything, just like Bright told me to. Snortius rubbed his chin. All right, that gives me an idea. Stinky and the brain, I want you two out there waiting for the Humi truck. When the truck falls in the hole, use the net thingy to grab him. 
Then you can kill him or capture him or eat him or whatever. So think, boss, you can count on us. I'm fairly certain you can count on me. After a few hours, the adjustments on the catapult were completed, and Stinky and Debrain went out to the ambush spot where Snotling McQueen had been dutifully waiting for the Humi truck to arrive. When Stinky and Debrain and their Snotlings arrived, pushing the three modified catapults, they saw Snotling McQueen gnawing on what looked like a piece of old roadkill. There wasn't much left besides bones and fur, but McQueen was feeling a mite peckish, and there wasn't really anything else to eat out here. Stinky and Debrain set about camouflaging the catapults and waiting for the Humi truck, whenever it was going to arrive. After about an hour of waiting, Stinky's ears perked up, and he heard the sound of wheels on the dirt road. The greenskins all got into their hiding places and watched as the truck approached. The hole had been covered by a thin piece of plywood that was then covered with a thin layer of dust. And the vehicle fell right into the trap snapping the plywood and falling into the shallow pit with a loud clunk. The brain signaled Snotling McQueen to start running back to base, and the red-painted green skin shot off like Daka back to Mega Humiopolis. A loud series of expletives could be heard from inside the vehicle, as two Humies wearing work uniforms emerged each one carrying a shotgun. One was a much larger, broad-shouldered man. The other was thinner and more grottish-looking, if grots could be tall. The skinny Humie spoke first. Shit, Carl! I didn't think we'd have bandits out here on account of the critters being too nasty. Or maybe it was the critters that dug this hole. Since when do critters use plywood, Carl? As they argued, the brain fired his catapult. The net hit the thinner Humi as the weights wrapped him up tight, pinning his arms to his side. Stinky fired the second catapult. Unfortunately for him, the Humi named Carl was a little quicker on his feet as he realized the nature of the ambush and dodged the first net. The third catapult, fired by a crew of snotlings, managed to strike true against the larger of the two Humis. But as he was much bigger, he was not wrapped up so nice and neat as a skinny Humi. He could still very much move his arms and pointed his shotgun directly at the brain and fired. This shot could have been the end of the brain. However, one little snot, either out of bravery or stupidity, leapt in front of the cloud of buckshot, shielding the brain's enormous head from harm. Squishy was his name and his death was well suited to the moniker he was given as he was torn apart by the shot. Stinky and the Snotlings surged towards Carl, hoping to subdue him. They beat on him with sticks, and Stinky struck at him with the end of his las gun. They could have simply shot him where he stood. But capturing Humies met more Humie grots to work in Mega Humiopolis. But Carl was simply too big and too strong to be subdued by a Gretchen and a handful of snotlings. He shook the tiny green skins away as they tried to climb his shoulders and sink their shivs into his flesh. What the blazes are these things? Rah! Carl let out a mighty roar as he threw them all off and lowered his shotgun and fired. 
time seemed to slow down for Stinky as he saw the muzzle flash right in front of his face. He managed to throw his arms up in front of him before the buckshot blasted them apart and embedded deep in his skull. Stinky's head snapped backwards as he was blown back several meters, slamming into the embankment along the road. Seeing his buffoonish compatriot fall, something broke in brain. He cried out as he charged at Carl, and the Gretchen unleashed his fury on the Humi, leaping at his face. Carl was taken aback by the ferocity of De Brain and tumbled backwards, falling down at the edge of the pit. De Brain was relentless as he slammed the butt of his las gun into Carl's head again and again until he could hear the wet crack of his skull as he fell unconscious. The other Humi was knocked out by the snotlings as Brain's weapon fell from his hands. He ran over to Stinky and held his ear right near Stinky's nose and mouth. The Brain could hear very faint, raspy breathing coming from Stinky. Then the Brain, blessed by Mork, had an idea. He began to get out his medkit, and the snotlings provided him with another medkit they found in the Humi truck. De Brain applied a fungal salve to Stinky that he had developed and began wrapping Stinky's entire body with bandages and gauze to stop the bleeding. By the end, Stinky looked like some kind of mummy, with only his large green nose sticking out to identify him as a green skin. The brain looked hatefully at Carl, enraged that he was only dead. But then, he heard it. Carl was also still breathing, though just barely. The brain carefully attended to his wounds as well, using the Humi medicine he found in the truck. He wrapped his skull as well, hoping to stabilize him. I have plans for you, Humi. I have plans for you and Stinky. It was not long before Snotius arrived with the Furious. They had repaired the big Humi truck and cheered as they saw the loot they had managed to snag. They attached a chain to the truck in the ditch and hauled it out with little trouble. The Humi truck was much bigger than the one they had looted from Mega Humiopolis. Snortius claimed the larger truck as his own and named it Da Boss Truck. Da Furious, of course making use of his new prosthetic lead foot, claimed the smaller truck for himself and named it Da Road Runner. The Greenskins hooted and hollered as they drove back to Mega Humiopolis. There was a great celebration for the victory over the Humies. In one day, the Greenskins went from having no trucks to having two. And Snortius, of course, declared a great feast. But the brain was in no mood for feasting. Even though Stinky spent his whole life being nothing but an incompetent boob, the brain still missed him. There was nothing logical about it. It was a possible function of biology. They did spore at the same time, and there might have been some kind of bond. But for whatever reason, Stinky's death, or rather his death-like state, weighed heavily on De Brain as he moved the two bodies into his workshop. Don't you worry. I can rebuild you. I can make you bigger, stronger, faster, stinkier. The brain 
closed the door on his workshop and went to work. No man do they call me, my mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to the latest episode of Growing the Tribe. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that one day you too can perform scientific experiments on your best friend. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about green skin hegemony. If you would like to support me, there are links in the description to my PayPal, my Patreon, and my Teespring. And if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Growing the Tribe playlist and start from the very beginning. That should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all very much for listening. No man out.